the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I didn't hear you say amen. 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 You may have your seats. The Lord bless you. It's a wonderful morning, is it not? It is. Ah, that was a resounding yes. Bless the Lord. We forgot to do the reading, but that now allows me <laughs> to do a lot more. Amen? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Our reading will have started at 23 to 31, but let us start at 1 as we journey in Scripture. Amen? Uh, this word has been sitting on my heart for a while now, uh, given the current affairs and the crossroads at which we as a nation and as a church find ourselves. And I remember I told you, when we go to the streets, we'd better be found there by God, being them that have blameless hands, hands that did not shed blood. Amen. The Bible asks who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, who can come up his holy hill. Yes. And the next verse explains who can do that. It says what? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Praise Jesus. That when we are out there on the streets, we are not out there by our own carnality, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Acts chapter 4 is about when the disciples now went out and began to do great and wonderful things as Jesus had promised. He said, those that believe in me will do even greater things than what he did. In chapter 3, they began in style. As they were going, Peter and John, as they went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, they found a man there by the gate beautiful. And looking at them as if he wanted to borrow arms, they told him, silver and gold we do not have, but what we have we give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. This is a man recorded to have been more than 40 years old and had never walked. But that day, he did what? But there were powers that be in those days that were not happy about what they had done. And so in chapter 4, we find the aftermath of them. Same day, after prayers, they went out and began to speak to the people again at the porch. And as they speak to the people, we are in verse 2 studio, as they speak to the, to the, stu, to the people, uh, something happened that those powers that be were vexed and were angry at them. Munakuja hapa munamusha kiwete. Na labda huyo kiwete alikuwa natawanga tithe kwa mse hapo hivi fulani. Do you know those, the story of the people who borrow in town? You know that story? They are business people for, they are contact points for business people who deposit them there at 4 a.m. with kikombe moja ya chai na mandazi moja. And then at some time in the day, utawana wamepanga mandazi ingine moja na kikombe ingine ya chai. And then they take a cut of most of what those people get. That does not mean you stop helping them. That means that now you are aware. That as you're helping that one who is on the street, you're also helping another one who is seated. Anaana ulemavu wa wote. Praise Jesus. So probably this guy in chapter 3, seated there, was somebody's business. E corruption ijaanza leo. What we are fighting in our nation today has not started today. It started a long time ago. All right? And so some people were angry. And the Bible said in verse 3, and they laid hands on them and put them in custody because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next. Hata wewe unajua ukishikwa saa kumi na mbili. Hakuna kutoka. Sindio? The earliest unaweza toka ni saambili the next morning. That is what happened to Peter and John. And the next day, the rulers and the elders and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, now they have called even the highest of them all. They met in Jerusalem to judge these ones. This is what is happening in verse 4, to, uh, in, in chapter 4. To judge Peter and John for preaching the resurrection. 
Why were they against the resurrection? There were two sects of those teachers of the laws, the who is who. There were two sects. One was called the Pharisees, and the other one was the Sadducees. Now, one sect believed in the resurrection, the Pharisees. And the other sect believed, Maisha Ikiisha is a rap. So, do Kenya Utadu, Ukiondokea, Nivo Ewe, and Imeisha. And there was always antagonism. There was always, until these guys began to preach that now, you know, the resurrection is real. Ah! So, guess which sect was very vexed? It was like, no, how can you say that? Show us, show us in scripture, Mali Mutu Ashawa Ifufuka. Forgetting that Elisha and Elijah walikuwa mefufua watu. Ah! <laughs> Those are teachers of the law, forgetting that there was uh, that bringing back to life that was pointing, it was a foreshadow of how the Son of Man would be raised up from the dead. And so they sit and they decide to forbid, took over 13 Sasa. They decide to forbid these disciples from preaching in the name of Jesus. Now, nowadays, the challenge is because you are afraid of those around you at Anza Kukujaj. But in those days, they were forbidden. None of us has been forbidden to preach Christ, yet most of us are not preaching Christ. Yet we say we are born again. But in these days, they were told to mewakataza. And yo, yo, kitu ingie vizuri, they were beaten. Viboko kabisa, walichapwa mijeledi. They were beaten with whips, and they were commanded to not speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But in verse 19, Peter and John answered and said to them, <laughs> which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to God? And they told them, because now you sat and judged us, you also be the judge of that. One as few. They told them, you be the judge of that. And then now my focus is from 23. And they said, and, and now it is the story going on and saying, and being let go, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. See their reaction to what has happened the last night and this morning. They said they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Did I tell you to pray always? And they said, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Hallelujah, studio. Yeah, we pray for you quickening. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through your mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? This is actually a quote from Psalm 2. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Let us read that 29 together, all of us. Now, Lord... Aha, stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of Jesus, your holy servant. Ah, after they prayed, the place they were meeting was shaken. That was an earthquake. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Now you would query, these are people who have already in chapter 2 been filled by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, okay? So why is it necessary for them to be filled again by the Holy Spirit? Ah, let us journey in the word of God. And this story continues and shows us how the disciples now, because of that in feeling a second time, began to share everything among themselves. That is when the church began to be crazy. People went and sold all their belongings and brought to the disciples so that they could have sustenance as they preached the gospel. Hallelujah. I know today some of you are because must go and reject. Some of you are gearing to go to Saba Saba. The rest of us, we will be going for a prayer watch. Hallelujah. Amen. At St. Peter's Embakasi. 
to support your quest so that you do not see a stray bullet there and it downs you. Bwana asifiwe. Now, the things of God are the things of governance. Because when it says that God rules, that means that God is the chief governor of everything there is. Psalm 46 says the earth and its fullness thereof is the Lord's. And so when we are talking about governance of a nation or of the world, that means we have borrowed that kind of thing from somewhere. Now, when men have copied the template of God, as they try to contextualize it, something happens. We begin to insert our own wants and lusts in there. And as we insert our lusts in there, corruption and all those other vices find their way into governance. Now, these disciples, when they went out, they realized as much as we stepped out, not to beat anyone. As all we want to do is tell people, Jesus, munajua Yesu, alikam, mukamuwa nini, alafu manze, akafufuka. That is all they wanted to tell people. And as they told people that, it was necessary for them to show the power of this Christ. That is why they begin to heal people. And in that prayer they have said, help us now to be bold to do miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Jesus. In other words, help us to show for real that we stand for this God. Why? Because the powers that be at that time had infiltrated the system of governance and began to be corrupt about it. And these ones had come to change the equation. However, from verse 23, something tells us that they were not going to do business as usual. Every day in the city of Jerusalem, during the occupation by the Roman Empire, there were riots against the occupation by the Romans. Praise Jesus. Go read your natural history. It comes down after the captivity by Nebuchadnezzar, then the Greeks arise. And you find the Maccabean revolts happening in that time, in the intertestamental time. And that is when Maccabees rises up with his sons and they fight against the oppression of Napoleon Bonaparte, is it not, not, not Napoleon, but who? Alexander the Great, who spread the Greek Empire. And when the Greek Empire falls, you arrive at Pompeii. Natural history students, you understand this, yeah? And now that power occupies that time. And this is the powers that now the revolts of the Jews are happening. Every day there is a riot. And so anyone who stands to bring up a revolt is quashed with the power of the Roman feast. You understand? This is the context of why these things are happening. Now, the Romans did a favor to the Jews. They allowed them to practice their religion and to govern the city lightly. However, any time that the Jews were unable to govern, the captain of the Roman guard would come in. That is why you find Jesus meeting centurions and Roman soldiers. That is why you find disciples meeting centurions and Roman soldiers. One went to Jesus and told him, my servant is sick. And when Jesus wanted to go, he said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. If you only say a word, it shall be done. And he explained, even I am a man of authority. I say to this one, go. And he goes. And I tell to that one, come. And he comes. In chapter 10 of this same Acts, you'll find a man called Cornelius, whom Peter is sent to. That means they are interacting with powers, the occupying army. Now, when they begin to preach, every time the Sanhedrin sees people preaching and stirring up the city, they call in the Romans. They say these guys will stir up a riot. And if you read the story of Paul, that is what happens. Now, they have come to a time when just a few weeks before, the city was in a pro because Jesus Christ was being sentenced. And the Sanhedrin had whipped up the emotions of the people and declared to the, uh, to the powers of the Romans, crucify him, crucify him. And because of that uproar, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, handed over Jesus to them and washed his hands and said, the blood of this man is with you. He was just trying to avoid an unrest. And they told him, if you allow this guy to go free, we shall tell Caesar you are not his friend. Ah, Gross insubordination. Go home. That is what 
Pilate was afraid of. Now, weeks later, these guys are still teaching in the same name of Jesus Christ. Remember, they had lied. They had paid the soldiers who were guarding the grave to do what? To say, Hako Fufuka. His disciples came at night. They overpowered us. They rolled away the stone. <laughs> and they took his body and ran away with it. That is, that is the story. And even today in some faiths, and even that some Jews will say the same story. That is what they paid people to say. But now we are seeing that they are saying that this Jesus did not die. He did not decay. But God has raised him up. And they are performing miracles, signs and wonders in his name. And my focus is where they now come back. And that is why we come to church. After you go out there and do everything that you need to do, you must have a community you come back to so that you can be strengthened on your way. See, when Peter and John come back to, their, uh, to the community of believers, now 3,000 strong, they say, these guys, what happened? Yesterday after we went to prayer, first of all, we healed a lame man, number one. Number two, after healing a lame man, we were arrested because we went teaching and preaching the name Jesus. So we have been in the cells all night. And then finally we were stood before the Sanhedrin. And we had to tete ourselves. And we were to preach katika jina la Yesu na wame chapa. Does that sound like a story that is familiar with you? That when you go out there, there are many things that are against you. Praise God. And sometimes you want to ask God, Mbona mimi ni mkristo enanapitia vitu mingi? So, why do Christians go through challenges? The boldness that we see in the portion that we have read could not be there if that uh, persecution had not happened. Very complacent. We have power, we have what, and we are okay. But it was not to be so. They had to be persecuted for them to know the depth of the message that they carried. Today, as we do everything that pertains to agitating for better governance, as we do everything that uh, pertains to having better lives, as you apply for that job, as you find that job, as you join whoever you're joining, make sure one thing, that you came and approached it in the way of prayer. Praise Jesus. That is what they are teaching us. That there was a way to do these things. That when you go to encounter the powers that be, you need to have been praying. I said that last time, I'll reiterate. That this is how to fight. The people of the kingdom do not fight in the streets first. That is secondary. They fight on their knees first. Praise Jesus. So if you have not prayed about anything that you are about to do, please do not do it. Because that is secondary. That is not primary. The primary thing is for us to be men of prayer. Let us go back to that prayer when they, where they say to give them boldness that they can do these things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to do what? To speak your word with great... How many of us would want to speak the word of God with great boldness? There we go. Yes, some hands are halfway, some are you, that one you deal with the Holy Ghost. This is a great prayer. The next verse says what? Stretch out your hand to do what? To heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Guys, as the times roll, and I told you, you have done a great thing. As the times roll, we must fight from the correct position. You understand? If we only fight in the streets, we will lose. If you only take your carnality and apply for a job with it, you will apply a thousand times and get one reply, which, is, which will be a regret. But if you fight from the correct position... Now, the church is a militant organization. It is arranged like an army. So when you fight out of rank and out of file, you will be defeated. That is why in this verse here it says, put on the whole armor of God. And the armor that is being mentioned there is the armor of a Roman soldier. 
the breastplate, the helmet, the belt, the buckle, the shield, and the sword, and even the sandals. That is the armor of a Roman soldier. And as our vicar was launching this theme, he told us to look at that gentleman there, clothed properly in the armor that he fights in, with his weapons and his machinery and everything that is his. Now, the church is that militant. When you fight out of file and rank, you are the first one to fall. My desire is for you to understand that we do not fight from the front lines first. We fight from our knees first. That is the formation we take in battle. And we are in those times that Peter, uh, sorry, that Timothy was told about, perilous times in 2 Timothy 3. We must fight against so many enemies. So we are fighting a battle on very many fronts. A preacher I like said, the moment you, be, you became of Jesus, you were in a battle and you didn't know who enlisted you. Now Jesus enlisted you. you the battle chose you already. <laughs> so you must learn and understand how to fight. Where are we fighting from? These ones, Peter and John, went back to their company. And they told them everything that had happened to them. And then the response of that entire company was what? Prayer. And they make bold prayers. So as young people, as parents, as people who desire a future in Christ, we must understand where our positioning is. Where are we? Niwapi to Miss Mama. Where is our formation? All of us love to see Madarakade and uh, Mashujade as the army displays. Sindio? We love eh? How disciplined. Ukiangalia kwa laini moja hivi, awoni vichu ambili, unawana tukichua moja imendara. Ni wakianza kupiga kona, unadiscover, wa, 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 wa. There are so many of them. That is exactly our formation in Christ Jesus. That first and foremost, we come to him and ask for strength. And then we begin to move according to how he instructs us. So that at no time are you found powerless when you are in battle. That verse in Proverbs if you faint in the day of battle, it is your fault. Why? Your strength is small. <laughs> Pull up that verse. If you faint in the day of battle, your strength is? So why is now mbona baden in arudishwa kwako? Because as a soldier in the army of Christ, you must understand where to do your formation. Umesmama wapi? Your strength is small. So it means that it is your responsibility to know what to do and where to go to gather strength. Another verse in Psalms says they grow from strength to strength. All of them coming to Zion. Those that love the Lord. After they have come through the valley of Baca, they go from strength to strength. Those are the ones that understand our formation is in our God. That is the one that we look to. So that in the day of adversity, you don't find yourself fainting. Because you understand my beginning point is prayer. We are not over-spiritualizing these things. Governance comes from God. And it is him that we must look to so that we can be like these ones. The previous verse is the one that talks about the valley of Baca. The valley of trouble. The valley of great warfare. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. Because those that knew how to look to God went through a place of trouble, the valley became a place of goodness, a place filled with pools, and rain came down the, the valley of Baca. And the Bible now says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appearing before God. Those are the ones that know how to make their formations in God. Young people listen. Parents listen. We must understand how to do battle. It is the Lord that instructs our hands to battle and teaches our fingers to war. Do you, have you read that verse? It is there. Now, if it is God that brings us to the place of battle, how then can we go with the arm of flesh? And the arm of flesh, the Bible says, it will fail you. Cast is the man that putteth his trust in a man. But when we look unto God, when we begin here as a community, praying for those things, that are great. There are principalities and powers. 
There are rulers in the dark in the dark places of this world. There are rulers in the heavenly places that we do not understand how to fight them. But the Bible says we do not war against flesh against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and against powers. You cannot go there with your flesh. You will come back defeated. Yes, the battle is the Lord's and he won it. But if you clothe yourself with flesh and go to fight against things that you have no understanding of, you will come back defeated. But how to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus is to actually remain in Christ Jesus. We are an army of young people. We are an army that God is looking to deploy in these times and in the times to come. One day you are the one who will be seated there as a parent of many children. Telling them, Kaini to Kwayesu. But if your formation in the army of God is not where it ought to be, you will not get there. So begin with prayer. We, it is not of a spiritualization. Begin with prayer. There is a song by Theophila Sunday. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. And when I leave, <laughs> we are not over spiritualizing this life. This life is greatly spiritual. Paul says now we behold as in a what? As in a mirror. But then we shall see what? Face to face. We shall discover that all this governance comes from God. All these systems, they came from God. It is men who began to corrupt them. And where did God form these things? You go back to Genesis chapter 2. As he begins to tell man. Actually chapter 1. And he said what? He says he will give man dominion over. Do, dominion means that man has been installed as a ruler. He must now find and create systems that cascade the power that God has given him over these things. God is the one that gave that dominion. It is man now who began to bring corruption. You go to, is it chapter 6 where you find Nimrod Kush ordering the building of Tower of Babel. Corruption enters. Where did it come from? Chapter 3 of Genesis. And we can spend a lot of time here and I can explain to you. But I came to say one thing only today. You are in battle. And because you are already in battle, the battle belongs to the Lord. So make sure that your formation, hallelujah, is at the right place. Where is that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Then as we go on, we are not afraid. Praise God. In 2 Timothy first, uh, chapter 1, he says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. 7. For God has not given us a spirit. And the way it starts, it means there were things that Paul was saying before there. Go read them. For God has not given us a spirit of Fear, but a spirit of what? Power. A spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. That is our formation. Coming back to Jesus and aligning with him so that when we are deployed against demons, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual forces of evil, we are not afraid. We can stand and face demons in the eye and tell them in the name of Jesus, be removed. We can begin to change systems of government by our praying. And that is how we will change the systems of government. You just, you know, Kenyans, unfortunately, we forget too quickly, right? We forget too quickly. I am happy Gen Z revolution has done what it has done. I am also afraid that by December, we will have forgotten. We'll only remember this matter again as the uh, finance bill is coming into parliament next May. <laughs> and then we shall begin to whip up our emotions. But if we journey with the Lord, we shall not forget. If we align with Jesus, we shall not forget. In him there is remembrance of everything. I have come to tell you, align with Jesus. Pray before you do. Whether it is on the streets, whether it is in your room, pray before you begin. It is not an over spiritualization. This world is spiritual from its building to now. God said, Let us 
make man. Before that, he said, let there be. It was coming from him out of nothingness into the form. That means it came from spirit. It is highly spiritual. It is not over spiritualizing this thing. It is how it is. But let us be the ones that go from strength to strength. Every one of us appearing before the Lord in Zion. Praise the name of the Lord. I know some of us have been tired. And I want now for the next two minutes to just help us and make prayer for us. Just close your eyes and begin to intercede. Because some here are very, very tired. Some are very tired. Some do not know what to do with this space. Some are conflicted. Now you are afraid. You are passionate about this revolution. But you are afraid of biting a bullet out there. Yes. Come to Jesus. Tell him, help me Lord. By your power to be able to be bold to speak your word. So that as we go in our ranks and fire, we can form what Jesus has called us to do. This revolution will abort if it is not prayed for. Your future will abort if you do not pray for it. Your job will be frustration only if you do not pray about it. Now I want to pray with you who is feeling tired. Shoot up your hand. Let me see it. I will pray with you. And I stand in Zion before the king. I will pray with you. You're tired. You're saying, Lord, strength from on high. Studio, please project Psalm 20. You're tired. You're saying, Lord, I came. I don't know, but I came. Yes, because this is his word. Psalm 20 says, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Father, I hold on to this word before you in Zion. And I declare that you hear these ones whose hands went up. Who even were afraid sometimes to raise their hands to ask for strength. Lord, may you be the one that protects these ones. These ones that are feeling weary. Because you're the one that replenishes men. Replenish them. So that, Lord, they can go from strength to strength. Because they are the ones that have looked to you for strength. Strengthen them, O oh God. May you protect them because you are the one that is the God of Jacob. May help come from them from the sanctuary and may support come from them for them from Zion. Father, I pray that you will bring support. Send your holy angels to stand guard. If when your son Jesus Christ was contending at Gethsemane about the cup of your wrath that he was about to drink and you sent him the help of your angels, how much more these ones that have believed on you Send us help, O oh God, from Zion. May your angels forever stand guard with us. We activate the angels of heaven now to stand because we are they that are to receive the salvation of God and angels are ministering spirits for us. We stand and invoke your name that the angels may be active for us. Father, we bless you because you are God and you are true. I know for a fact that your strength has now been poured out. Holy Ghost, you that filled the hearts of your saints back in the old times when they had been uh, punished for preaching the name Jesus, for healing in your name. Now come, I pray, as they prayed, strengthen us again and give us the power of the Holy Ghost, we pray, that we may be strong even as we leave this place. We bless you, O King. We bless you, O King. May we be diligent to perform our duty for you and before you. Now that you have given us strength, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. You're there, you're saying you're not born again and you need this salvation. This salvation is the beginning. Very quickly, eyes closed. Watch this idea while I Eyes closed. You're there, you're saying I only need to get born again. Come. Shoot your hand up and Asha will help you here. You're there. You're saying, Mimi, ni, Mimi Kwanza ni okoke. Ndiyo alafu hii mambo yanze ku make sense. And that is how it makes sense. You're there. You're saying, I need to get born again this morning. Do not let this opportunity go. There you are. Yes, Asha's eyes are open. They will see your hand. They will help you. Because your knees may be feeble. The Bible says, strengthen the feeble knees. That is why we have Asha's. Is your hand up? All right. All of us are born again this morning. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, thank you. You have been good to us. Help us to come back to the heart of worship and make authentic prayers there. Help us to lift your name high in our secret places so that as we go forth, we may go with the boldness that the Spirit has given us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church says, and the church says, somebody appreciate Jesus. Praise Jesus. Aha, uh -huh. we we'll be on our feet so that we can bring our bounty to the presence of the Lord. <laughs>